What's up everyone? Shane here with ROA Off-Road. Today, I'm going to be doing a full tour walk around on the Dweller D15. Now we do actually have a full tour, but it was almost coming up on a year that we filmed that. And there's been not a ton of changes to the trailer from the manufacturer, but we've done a ton of changes, some retrofitting, some mods here at ROA Off-Road out in Utah or South Carolina. We have two experience centers that you can go to to pick up one of these campers. So we've done a bunch of changes. Plus I've put thousands of miles now on this trailer. Like I've taken it to Baja. I've taken it through Colorado, off-road, We've taken it into Moab. We've done some crazy off-roading trails in Moab. We've kind of kind of got it dialed in with some of our upgrades. Obviously we've had issues. We've had some warranty stuff. And I just wanted to do a full walk around, full tour, updated, because we're coming up here on 2023. So this is gonna be one of the newest models that you can buy. Plus this one is completely tricked out. This one we kind of have upgraded it. We've done every, almost every upgrade we can do on this unit. So as I walk around, I want to talk about some of the upgrades that we've done. And also we can get into some of the issues that we've had and we've seen. And just so you kind of know what's going on with the Dweller D15 by OBI. OBI stands for Outback Innovations. It's an American owned company. They're building overseas and bringing them in here. So they're headquartered down in Arizona. And that's where the units come in. They do a little bit of assembly and then they get shipped out to us. One of the owners actually studied out in Indiana near RV Mecca of the US, you know, and saw the RV industry and thought it was just terrible. He ended up working in the Australian industry for going on 20 or so years. And he was like, man, the stuff in Australia is so much better. We need to start building trailers, bringing them to the US, you know, bring a better product into the US. That's not like cheap. And that's kind of like where he came up with this Outback Innovations, right? Because they were inspired by the Outback Off-Road. The two guys that own it are here in the United States stateside. Let's start walking around and kind of showing off this trailer. Let's start with the specs. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the overall length. And this is obviously with the back pop-out slid in. And while you're towing it down the road with the tires from the, the very tip of the tires all the way to the front of the Mick Hitch is 22 feet, six inches. So it's a pretty, it's not super long. It's pretty agile. The width on this is seven foot three inches. And that's really nice is because that's close to your tow vehicle. So it tracks really well down those narrow forest roads that you're gonna be wanting to go on with this off-road trailer. The height, and this is of it collapsed, is eight foot, three inches. Floor to ceiling, you're about six foot, six inches, a little bit more than that. Lots of headroom in this trailer, more than what you're getting in most off-road campers. Your departures, your overall clearance, all of that is really, really good. Our water capacities, we got uh, 52 gallons of fresh water. So for a trailer this size, that's pretty phenomenal. Obviously it's designed for the off-road, off-grid scenario. So they give you a lot of water. You uh, have a 21 gallon gray tank and obviously the outside kitchen, the outside shower, you're gonna end up um, dropping a lot of water on the ground. So that that's a good amount, you know, you're not gonna fill it up. And then it's actually a cassette toilet. And I'll talk about that when we get closer to that as we're walking around. And all of the electrical systems components are all Renogy, even the solar charge controller, the inverter, and I'll get into more of the details when we go inside and I'll show those to you. The, the Obviously this is a pop top. So a lot of people have concerns of like, does it stay warm in cold weather? The answer is yes. It's like 20 degrees here. I slept in it last night and it was, it actually got too warm. I had to turn the heater down to like 68 degrees because the whole thing, it was just very, very warm. We've done some heat tests. You wanna go check out those videos. We have tons and tons of video footage of this trailer, off-roading, the upgrades, the mods. So we'll be inserting all the links below this video so you can jump on and check those out. But also like, if you're watching this on our ROA Off-Road channel, 
go over to the OBI off-road channel and there's exclusive content on these trailers, on the Dweller 15, the Dweller 13, the Dweller 19. You wanna go check everything out over there or just go to our website and we have a lot of the videos there too. So tons and tons and tons of information. It's, if this is the first video you're seeing, just so you know, there's probably a few dozen other videos that go into each individual, very, very, very detailed. But I wanna talk about, let's talk, show off the kitchen stock. You only have an outside kitchen. Here at ROA, we've retrofitted it to have an outside and inside kitchen. Really, this trailer's dirty. We've been off-roading actually and camping in it. So sorry, it is a new unit. It's just our show model. These heavy duty luggage latches, these you see on really high end, million dollar motor coaches in the US. This kitchen comes out. You'd actually just press this bar down anywhere and slides right on out. Like I said, we were using this, cooking on it. So it is a little dirty. This slides out right there. You have a 12 volt plug. You can use a light or charge your devices out here. Has a nice light right here. You have a two burner Dometic stove here. And then you also have a sink and this has hot and cold water. And then your connections are right here. You just pop these off and you have hot, cold and your gas. And it comes with all the lines and you actually just hook them into this thing right here. You also have a nice silverware drawer. You can put spatulas, spices. We have a soda or drink opener. And let's head on over to this spot. Right here, we have a prep tray. And I love that this is right next to the kitchen area. So you can kind of see how close it is. If you're here, you know, cooking, washing, you have this whole area right here to prep on, but then you also have this area. And right on the inside is the actual kitchen and we've installed an indoor kitchen. So somebody can be in there cooking, dicing, chopping. They can open the window and they can be handing stuff out, setting it right here. Maybe this is where you put your buns and your plates and stuff for your kids to come and grab the food. You do also have more USB plugs right here for charging your devices. And also uh, this is a mount for a television. The inside TV, you can remove it. You can mount it right here. You could just put a bigger TV right here if you wanted to. So for all those tailgaters out there, you wanna camp off grid during the summer and then as fall comes, you wanna start going to football games, you can use it as that too. You also have some ports and plugs right here to be able to plug in the TV and have it work off a 12 volt. So nice little prep area. The windows, I do wanna talk about these. These are a Eurovision polycarbonate dual pane window. These are way stronger than glass. A lot of people ask, why are you putting plastic? It's not plastic, it's polycarbonate. Yeah, it's, it, I guess it's a form of plastic, but it's actually a lot stronger than glass. And if you're off-roading and you're you know, hitting a tree branch or a rock chip flies up, or heck, even if you're playing baseball with your kids and a baseball hits this, it's not gonna break. I've thrown baseballs at it. Now, uh, if you throw a rock at it, it might break. You'll have to go check out our video where I throw a rock at this and see if it broke. Coming over here, we have the, this is a Aussie Traveler door. This is an Australian door. And the thing that I like about it so much is it has a triple latch system. So when you push this down to shut the door, you actually have a latch here, you have a latch here, and you have a latch here. And why that's so important and people don't realize is when you're off-roading and the trailer's moving back and forth, if you only have a single latch, which I've seen this in American trailers, the, the door can actually fling open, right? Just from the twisting and the bending of the entire trailer, because things do kind of shift a little bit and bend. So this prevents that from happening. You can have the door out of any camber and there's no way this door is gonna ever open. And then you also have this really cool screen. And this thing is full aluminum, pretty, pretty rugged and robust. So if you have pets or dogs, and what's really cool is you can actually shut this up and lock it. So you, if you're out in the wilderness and you wanna keep it nice and cool in there, you can actually crack these windows. They have a crack um, mechanism where you can just put a little bit of a uh, crack or turn on the vent fan and have some nice airflow going here, but you can lock the door and not have intruders come in because that kind of just attaches right to this, it becomes part of the door. While we're talking about the door, you have right here a little latch this is a nice metal heavy duty latch. So many American made trailers, they like, they use these little plastic latches that are so cheap and they just deteriorate and, and rot out over time. I love that they're just using just heavier duty stuff overall. Let's move over here and talk about the fridge. Really nice heavy duty screwed hinges and 
nice latches. And you come down here, they're all bolted on. You have a nice rubber seal right here. And then you have your fridge. Uh, it has a 12 volt plug and it also has an Anderson. So the newer ones, they're, they're connecting directly to the Anderson, which is good and ideal. Uh, there's also a fan in here that you can turn on just to create some ventilation during the summer. Obviously, these fridges run really nice when it's cold out. <laughs> they don't actually have to run because it's so cold out, hardly. But in the summer, you want to turn that fan on to get some airflow in there. You also have a light, so when you open this up at night, you'll have some nice lighting. This fridge, this is the Iceco. This is a 90 liter dual zone 12 volt refrigerator. It uses anywhere from 3.7 to 5, 7.5 amps. So once again, it just depends on how you're running it. I always tell people, you always turn it on the night before, before you ever put any food in it. And then don't put warm food in it. You always put, you try to just be smart about it. Cause then if you can get it down to temp and then you go on your camping trip, it's already at temp and it's not gonna be running as much. So you're not gonna be taking a huge surge or draw off of your batteries right off the bat. But check this out. It's dual opening doors, right? <laughs> Which is kind of silly. But if you're out in your truck, you believe it or not, when I was in Baja, I use this all the time because I jump out of the truck and I'm like, I wanna go grab a drink and I'd like run and grab it on this side instead of have to walk around. Us lazy, lazy Americans nowadays. <laughs> nice, nice tray all aluminum and the tracks and everything are super robust, very heavy duty. You're bolted in. I'm really impressed just in these trays and everything. They don't feel cheap or chintzy by any means. And then you have another bottle opener and then that just closes up and these seal pretty good. I've done a lot of off-roading in them and they seal really well. Uh, one thing I do wanna man mention before we head to the front is the speakers. You do have a stereo system and you have the nice outside speakers to be able to play music and have a party if you want to. Once again, it's those tailgating parties, right? But let's walk around and talk about the front. Okay, sorry that this thing is so dirty. <laughs> we like we drove through a snowstorm, been off-roading, but right up here, you see we have our propane tanks. There's two propane tanks. You can put one on each side. This is a 20 pounder. You can put in a 30 pounder. It's gonna be a little bit higher, but easily able to fit a 30 pounder in there. Uh, right here, we have this really nice storage box and there's a little spot where you can actually put a padlock to lock it up. And this just gives you a nice space. I usually put my water hoses, just equipment gear that I need to get too quickly. Lots of, lots of different options there. I do wanna talk about a little bit about the frame. It is a galvanized frame. If you don't know what that is, go do some research. But essentially galvanization is one of the best things you can do to uh, prolong the life of steel. Obviously we know aluminum lasts forever. The second steel is forged, the atmosphere starts to actually make it break down and corrode. And then it starts to rust and then it deteriorates and turns back to dirt. Galvanization will prolong the life of any steel close to 100 years, right? Uh, in the harshest climates, that's salt water on the beach. And that's why you see everything on the freeways, on the roads, all galvanized. Now, a few of the little upgrades that we've added here. Lots of people want a bike rack. We do not recommend putting a bike rack on the rear of this trailer because that just kind of messes up the balance. So we've added a bike rack up here. You can fit two bikes on the front of this thing right here, which is really cool. We also have a electric tongue jack. Now you do still have the manual tongue jack, which is the ARC 750, and that's great for recovery. But honestly, when you get to camp, cranking it, it's just not as pleasant. So this guy right here, you just press a button and you're ready to go camping, which is pretty cool. There's also a little light on it, which is nice. And this thing, when it comes all the way up, it's actually above the jockey wheel. So if, if you're off-roading in a weird spot, you have a higher chance of knock hitting, smashing this than you do our upgraded electric tongue jack. Right here, I wanna talk about the hitch. The Mick hitch is such a cool hitch. This thing just locks in, really cool hitch system. This articulates in every single direction. So this way, this way, up and down. So your truck could be facing straight down and the trailer could be up here, or, or it could be in a crazy you know, camber. Your trailer could be this way and your truck could be in another direction. And when you're off-roading, this is extremely important. Trailers that are like running a standard ball hitch that can't pivot, 
in these directions, they're not real off-road trailers. You have to have some sort of hitch that at least goes side to side. Up and down is important too, but side to side is such an important thing because of camber, right? When you're going in every di different direction, the up and down is good for ditches. And this actually alleviates a lot of stress on the trailer. Remember how I mentioned earlier, trailers kind of tend to bend and twist and torque. I've seen this is because I, I pulled my parents' uh, trailer up into the mountains one year, their truck was broke down, so I took it up to their campsite. And I was driving up this windy hill and every time I would turn, like the whole trailer would kind of like bend and the door flew open. I was like, what's going on, right? And I was like, I must not shut it. And I went out there and I shut it. And then I turned up another bend and the whole, the door flew out again. And I was like, what is going on, right? And so I went in there and, and it happened to me like four times. I kept on shutting it and I was like, it's just the bending and twisting of the entire trailer was popping the doors open. The compartments and the main door actually popped open, which was kind of crazy. With the double latching door, that's not going to happen. With a hitch like this, because the bending happens here and not on the trailer, if that makes sense. Also, the suspension I'll get to in a second, but the suspension is also hugely important for these articulating off-camber roads that you're hitting. Okay, moving over to the driver's side, I want to talk about a few things. First of all, I love the caulking that they do on this trailer, and I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's attention to details, right? These, these guys do the best caulk lines out of any trailer I've ever seen. <laughs> They're using a tool for sure. We have a guy at our shop, Tony. He can do caulk lines like this too. He's our quality control guy. Does a lot of innovation too, uh, research and development, but it's just really nice when they're doing it well. I swear some trailers, it's like a drunken sailor caulk their trailer. It's just, it's terrible. Also, let's talk about the construction. This is a, an aluminum, it's all aluminum. Uh, the, the frame inside are rectangular hollow studs. Uh, so you have studs with insulation, foam board in between, and then you have an aluminum skin on the exterior. The inside is also aluminum, so it's all aluminum. It's all welded. So welded aluminum with a galvanized chassis so very strong great materials this is a diamond plating so you know for rock chips all metal you're not dealing with any cheesy cheap frp fiberglass infused plastic or fiberglass that can delaminate over time you're not going to have any of those types of issues with this trailer over here these are two storage compartments this trailer when it comes to storage has the most storage out of any trailer this size in its class. There are a couple trailers out there that you could compare this to, like the, uh, the MDC uh, 15 or the Opus 15. But when it comes to storage, this thing is whew, really good. Huge storage compartment here. I took this to Mexico. We were in it for over two weeks. We had board games in here. It's almost bad. You, you almost pack too much and you don't need it all. And then you also have this guy right here. I threw some trash in there from the other night, but it's massive and there's lights and they automatically turn on when you open the compartment and everything is locking. It's very important. Now I wanna talk about one of the upgrades we've done. The trailer comes standard with these arc jacks on all four corners and therefore stabilizing. And I always tell people, if you try to lift the trailer up with those, they will break and they're not covered under warranty. So don't do that. This on the other hand, is rated for over 1,900 pounds, one of them. <laughs> Remember, this trailer's barely over 5,000 pounds. Uh, so you have four of these all the way around. So you have a total of almost 8,000 pounds of lift capability on this. We have lifted the entire trailer up and been able to change the tire with this. So I love this upgrade. When I got here, we were I was on a super crooked, uh, uneven ground, and I just started like, I didn't have to drive up on blocks. I, I didn't have to mess too much with the front. I, the front and the back is easy because you got the electric tongue jack, you just get level that way. But then the side to side, you're driving on blocks and then I've rolled off of blocks in the night, you know, got windy and rolled off. These things are amazing. I just lifted the whole trailer up, right? And I just got the whole thing level out of on a different angle. And it was, and I was just like, why don't we put these on all trailers? Why don't the manufacturers just add these standard anyways you can do it here with roa we can add them on for you and you can get a drill an impact gun and just really really fast don't even need to crank it which is nice moving over here let's talk a little bit about the toilet it, it is it is a cassette toilet it's theft ford this actually has its own separate water tank that you fill up right here and then 
when you're actually done using this, you go and dump it. I actually have a video on doing all of that for you. I love this cassette toilet. We're one of the very first dealers in America to import trailers into the US. And I got one of the very first, I think I had the second ever HQ17 and it had a cassette toilet. And at first I was kind of like, Ugh, I don't know about cassette toilets. We're not as, we're not as used to them in the US, but like, they're actually so, so convenient. When you're off-road, off-grid, if you have a tank, it just kind of limits you to having to, if you fill up, you have to move the whole entire trailer to go empty it, right? This thing, it fills up faster because it's not as big as like a 30 gallon black tank. You know, you got a few gallons in here, but you can pull it out and you can go dump it anywhere. And so when I'm up in the forest, there's always, you know, national forest campgrounds with those pit toilets or those volt toilets i just drive down to one of those and just you know i put it in the bed of my truck i also some people they'll buy a second one so if they're off somewhere crazy far they can throw it in the truck and fill up and just have as, as a backup right i think they're really convenient the other cool thing about this having its own separate water tank you can pull water from the stream or a river and you can put you know any type of water in this thing and it's not actually going into your water tanks and contaminating your water and you can keep on doing your crap <laughs> right here we have an outside shower and we do have the setup it actually mounts right to these i love the new shower setup on these because it's just super easy it folds out you also have a light so you can shower in the dark hot and cold too these are your connections. You have your tank fills right here, and then you also have a city water. So as we were importing some of these trailers right in the beginning, a lot of the stuff coming out of Australia or Australian design didn't have city water connections because they're like, it's only made for off-grid. It's like, yeah, but in America, we st I, I still go to campgrounds. Like I go off-grid most of the time, like 80% of the time I'm off-grid camping somewhere where there's no hookups but 20 percent of the time i'm traveling through somewhere and me and my wife we like we like to go to some of the nice koas you know the ones with swimming pools and lots of amenities plus sometimes when we're traveling we'll travel empty with water and then we'll get to wherever we're going and then go to a koa the first night and get all filled up and set up ready to hit the off-road or off-grid so and, and it's also fun to have a kind of a breakup if you're somewhere hot down in moab in the middle of the summer you want to go somewhere where you're plugged in and you can run the air conditioning of course you could do the upgrade and get lithium and run the ac off-grid but it's you know sometimes it's nice to have that setup now let's talk a little bit about the tires here the tires they are a 265 75 with a 16 inch rim very important for off-roading right and it is sitting on a load range e mud terrain tire uh, if you know anything about trailers and tires you'll be like of course it is that's obvious but we've had trailers in the past where they put were putting on load range c tires on trailers that weighed 5,000 pounds you could barely even put anything in the trailer with that tire <laughs> which was terrible luckily you, you're overkill on the tires or i mean you're actually where you need to be with the tires on this trailer i wouldn't be super worried about having blowouts because an underrated tire i just want to point out like this is all metal. This entire thing, like if you do have a blowout, I see this in the US, um, most of the entire skirting on most trailers are all uh, plastic. So you have a blowout and this tire just shreds up everything. If you did on this, it's all metal. Nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna get destroyed. I, I might bend something a little bit, but just, just more robust materials. Over here, we have our shore power. So if you are at a campground, you can plug it in. If you're at home and you wanna store it and make sure the batteries are getting charged. Once again, you have the solar. If it's parked outside, you should always be good because the sun is giving you power. And then we have the Truma exhaust here. One of the things I wanna to get to is the suspension. And one of the upgrades that we've done here at ROA, uh, we did notice when we got this unit, a little bit of issues with some sway or more like, oscillating while you were towing it at high high speeds so we were kind of going with trying to do a few different things we put on some friction sway controllers some equalizers the best thing that we found is actually upgrading the suspension we went to an all fox shock suspension and if you actually do put in an order to buy one of these before christmas we're going to throw that in for free part is part of the purchase and those are like 1500 to 2000 dollar upgrade one of our Roamers, a person that bought a trailer from us, we don't call them customers, they're ROA, MERS, Roamers. Uh, he, he switched out to the Fox Shocks and he's like, I think he said he was towing at like 80, 90 miles per hour down the highway, towed amazing. Another detail that I do wanna talk about 
as far as suspension goes, besides the upgrades that we've done, the standard suspension, it's a control arm, four gas shocks, and a coil. The independent suspension, essentially. And if you don't know what that is, uh, do some research, but you know, most trailers are running on leaf springs and solid axles. And leaf springs and solid axles have existed for a couple hundred years now. Horse carriages use them old cars use them <laughs> nowadays most of the australian industry is using independent suspension i believe that the american industry at some point is going to when it comes to off-road washboards there's nothing better than independent suspension it like they tow completely different and and they just don't rattle the trailer apart because the suspension is what's moving up and down i watched some overland overland x this guy's up in montana he says one of the most important upgrades you can do to your off-road overland rig is suspension because if you have a better suspension, it eats up the rocks, right? So you're not actually rattling your vehicle and destroying all the components in it. Instead, the suspension is moving up and down and it's the one that's doing the heavy lifting essentially or that taking the impact out of the, the constant vibrations, right? It's the same thing with a trailer as it would be with your tow rig. Suspension is king and independent, I think is the way of the future. That's all there is to it. On the back of this, you do have some recovery D-rings that you can be able to pull the trailer from behind. You also have your two spare tires and then this pop out so like i mentioned this is just over 26 feet when you open up this trailer the inside of it feels a lot larger and the reason is because this pop out and inside which you'll see in a second there is a king size bed it's 80 by about 72 inches so it's king size you use king size bedding on it oh my goodness and it's so comfortable it's so nice to be able to lay out on that bed our daughter when we go camping sometimes there is a bunk bed in here but sometimes when we go camping she jumps in with us and it's just so it's nice you can stretch you can put three people on that bed easily i love love this bed it's one of the most comfortable beds out of any trailer i've ever slept in but let's head over and show off this awning and then go on inside so there's a nice little button you just press and lo and behold the awning comes out and one thing i want to point out is it's a rounded door so you never have to worry about this accidentally scratching the awning oh one cool thing too is this handle right here is actually a light bar it does have a nice little light. And then you also have the outside lights, which are cool too, up here. And I don't think I mentioned that one earlier. But as this comes out, something really nice about it is it actually has a leg mechanism. It just has to pop on out. And then this drops down and holds the awning. Of course, you don't wanna put these out in high wind but I just want to kind of show off how easy that is and actually how much shade it gives you. It gives you a tremendous amount of shade. Overall, covers all of your nice, your stove, your sink, your prep area. You get a lot of cover for sun, for rain. The other thing too is you can kind of put it on a pitch, right? Like you can go higher on this side, lower on that side, which will cause the water to flow off in one direction. But yeah, that's a really nice awning. It's, it's massive actually, so. But let's head on inside now. Okay, coming in here, I'm gonna just set up right here for a second and show you some stuff because we got a lot of controls right here. First, you can see we have the awning button and it actually even has a picture of the awning, says awning. It's funny is because sometimes trailers don't label anything. It's just the cheaper ones, right? You can get cheap buttons that have no labels or you can get the ones that have labels. You also have your steps right here, which uh, you just press and they're electric. You also have a manual override there that you can engage and get the step out without the electric. So in case you had an issue with something, the motor or the power, just press that again. Coming back out to the switches, you can see we have everything. Lightning bolt, that's your 12 volt power that shuts off your all your power, so that's storage mode. You have water pumps, lights, plugs, fridges, turn on your fridge system. This also has a voltmeter here that tells you your current amperage right now is 1.6 amps. That's what we're using. The, the heater's on, it's running. So that's probably pulling some draw. You turn on the lights, watch, I'll show you. I'll turn on one of the lights and that, it just jumped from 1.6 to 2.6. So that big light over the head, that's the main light. It uses an amp per hour, so not too bad. Uh, you also have your water gauges, super nice. They're not like little dots. They give you these gauges to give you a better idea you have your gray and you have two water tanks that 52 gallons are two separate tanks 
but it all feeds the same faucets. And then you have all your switches. You have outside switches, inside switches, and then a stereo slash DVD system. So you can watch movies off grid, DVDs. If you don't have your Starlink yet, you can still watch some movies on here or just listen to music. This also does have inside and outside speakers, so you know. But come on in. Here we are inside. The trailer is very roomy. I love the colors too. It kind of has a modern look to it. We have the uh, wood floors. They're actually vinyl, but they have like a nice wood look to them. Do have solid, real wood cabinetry with a veneer. It's really important that it's solid wood too and no honeycomb. We've had lots of issues with honeycomb. This trailer has tons and tons of storage and these are locking latches. So those go in. The standard trailers, they use these cheap little ball latches that just fly open when you're off-roading. You can't take them off-roading, but these, as you can see, they lock in. Not gonna go anywhere. Got lots of storage here, more storage here. This, this trailer has tons of storage. They're stored underneath the bench. You have storage all right here. You know, I've been here working and I had my computer out right here. This thing, this table is pretty nice. It swivels out and you can put two people in here. You know, you can squeeze in and then same thing. You can squeeze, squeeze out right here and then you can have the table. When we were down in Baja, we had a little stool that we set out right here. And so we could be eating right here, my wife and our, my daughter there, or I usually sat out there actually. But then, then you can actually bring it in here and stow it and get it kind of out of the way. You also have tons of storage over here. This is actually a ladder to get to the top of the bunk bed. There's also a ladder on the other side over here that gets to the top. While we're right here, let me show off these windows on the inside. You do have a screen and this is a very fine, fine material. So you're not gonna be getting any bugs in here. And then you can also go up and black it out. And it gets pretty dark in here. So, which, I mean, I slept in last night and it's just really gets dark. These windows have a bunch of latches on them and they have three different stopping points. So you can have that for a little bit of airflow or you can go up one more or you can go all the way up there. And then you can bring it down and it has a spot that you can put into here, which actually gives it a crack. And that's what I was mentioning early. You can kind of crack it and still lock it up though, but have an air crack. When you're driving off the dirt road, don't want to do that. Otherwise you're going to get dirt in here. Um, to fully latch it, you bring it all the way in and then that seals it really, really well. I want to talk about the sleeping arrangements in this trailer. We've actually turned this into a bed down here. And we have uh, Josh, one of our sales coaches, his little girl slept right here. And then their other daughter slept up here. And this thing comes down and you have a nice mattress bed up here. And this is all folded up, but obviously it comes out more and then that folds over. But when you're closing it, that cushion folds. This bed space is pretty large. We've, you can put an adult up here. It's almost six feet tall. My camera guy, he's slept up here and he's about six, one, six, two, but his head kind of hung into this area. But definitely you can put a, a, an adult. My wife slept up here. <laughs> My daughter slept up here. So you can, you can definitely sleep somebody of a good size up here. Another upgrade that we've done here at ROA is we've added another bunk bed. And this comes down and you can sleep an additional person. And this is actually six feet long, so you can put a full six foot adult uh, or another kid up here. And then this has a little netting where you can store some stuff in here. And this has a post that actually comes down, which is really cool. And it adjusts and gets right onto the bed. You just use that to unscrew it and adjust it. And then the weight of the person is really nice and works really well. Now, if you don't need all of these beds, you can opt out to not get this bunk bed. And uh, we have another sales coach and his wife, they moved out to South Carolina. He's running our South Carolina Experience Center and they decided to get a dwell Dweller 15 and live in it. And so they actually ended up taking off this mattress and they put bins up here. And when the roof closed down, they had plenty of space and they just used this as extra storage. They went from a house to living in a Dweller 15, which was crazy awesome of them to do. Okay, let's move over to this side 
and uh, lots of storage space up here. This thing has so much storage. I cannot, I cannot hit that hard enough. If you're comparing this with other trailers out in the market that are similar, this thing destroys them when it comes to storage. Some of them, the other ones, you lose all the front storage because there's bunk beds up there instead of storage. And then one of them has like an inside kitchen, the other one doesn't. The way we've designed this inside kitchen, you don't actually lose any storage because we did an induction cooktop. So you still have this drawer, the whole depth of this drawer, because this thing is pretty thin. And then you'll, and these all, all lat, lock, latches. You also have storage over here. The batteries are underneath on the lowest shelf here. This used to be a closet hanging shelf, but we've added an inside refrigerator. So you have your 90 liter refrigerator outside, and then you have an additional refrigerator inside with a little freezer, or you can pull this out and use it all as fridge. You can power it up right here. So the upgrades with the fridge, the stove, the sink, to me makes this just a, an unbelievable trailer because stock, it comes only with the outside kitchen and fridge. With us adding all that in here, it makes this a very, very livable trailer. And obviously if it's cold, like it's been cold here, I don't wanna go outside and cook. I can, you know, put on my, you know, if you're doing morning coffee or tea or whatever you do, you turn it on right here. The induction also heats up a lot faster than the propane, especially at high elevation. And we have a nice outlet right here. And we actually have an outlet at each counter space so you can plug stuff in. This does, like I mentioned earlier, does have a 2000 watt inverter and it's by Renogy. It is a pure sign. So you can run your laptops on it and everything. So you just press this button and it engages all the outlets. Also the cooktop, you have that too, where you can turn that on. You don't need to run the inverter for the refrigerators because they're all 12 volt. Uh, down here, we also have the Adventure Solar Charge Controller, and that is a PWM. If you want us to upgrade that to an MPPT, we absolutely can do that. We do a lot of upgrades with Victron, and we also have a lithium battery upgrade system where we can change it all out to lithium. And then just to the left of the solar charge controller, we have the Truma controls, and this is your water heater and furnace. This is the Truma Eco. And so it has a two-stage furnace that goes from around 7,000 BTUs all the way up to 14,000, over, just over 14,000 BTUs. This thing, the efficiency, it's very, very, very efficient. Not, not, doesn't use very much power. The biggest question that we get asked all the time is how well does the canvas pop top perform in cold weather? We've had this heater on one tank running for, well, we've had it running for anywhere from two to three days, depending on your usage. And that's like, teens at night, you know, 30 degrees during the day. So it performs very, very well. And that's off of one tank. The next thing over here, we have our circuit breakers. Those are the 120 volt circuit breakers. And then just below that, we have our air conditioning system. There's also a remote for this that you can use, but the AC unit, it's an under bunk AC unit. It's, it's an HB 9,000. So it has a 9,000 BTU and it's all ducted. So it's not sitting on the roof, which is great. You don't have that issue with the center of gravity. Um, and it also works as a heat pump. The heat pump is not very good. I'll just be frank with you. If you're out somewhere really cold and you're off grid, you're gonna be using the Truma. Even if you're on grid, you most likely will use the Truma. But it does like take the edge a little bit. If you're not like under 50 degrees, you know, and you just need to get a little bit of extra heat, you can turn it on and it will give you a little bit of heat, but definitely not that good. Coming up here, we have a skylight and you have a light, and this does have a screen and a blackout shade too. And then coming over into this area, this is your bed, and it is unbelievably comfortable. You have heat ducts out here. You also have AC ports, which are over here. You have reading lights, turn on right here, and then they stow away down into this little area when you're traveling. You have a cigarette lighter and you have two USB ports to plug in your cell phones. The, the, the nice thing about having cigarette lighters and a lot of people don't realize, CPAP machines, uh, sometimes they have adapters for cigarette lighters, but they don't have actual USB. I'm charging my flashlight right here. Uh, so it's really important to have a cigarette lighter for some people next to the bed because you can use a different type of electrical connection. I also love this uh, this storage area right here. This storage area right here is massive 
and it's very deep. Oh, I'm gonna lose my hand down there. <laughs> so when we were out traveling through Baja, I was using this storage for all my books and miscellaneous gear. I throw my wallet and stuff in there at night and then my keys and just close it up right there. This is all a nice molded fiberglass piece, which is just, it feels really good and quality. You also have your TV right here for your nighttime viewing. And this same TV can, it's also strapped up and it kind of swivels out and you can also use that outside. So if you want to sit at the kitchen table and swivel this TV around, the kids can sit on the table and watch it here, or they can go on the bunk bed and watch it up from up there, whatever, you know, gives you some options. If you wanted to make a workstation over here and turn this into like a monitor or TV and mirror, you know, mirror your computer on there, pretty nice that it has options. And then this TV does come off and you can mount it outside. For your tailgating adventures okay coming over here once again crazy amount of storage i'm going to open this up and show you we have added a sink this is not stock on the dweller so you can only get the sink through roa this storage area is huge this is a king size blanket i wanted to shove in there to show you how big this space is and then and then this is kind of plumbed into the bathroom but you still have you can still store a lot of stuff right here cleaning supplies or whatever and then you have these massive drawers that open up so you can put a lot of stuff in there everything's locking and then you have we got our pot drawer our pots down here i think putting the pots down here is great because you can use the pots on the outside or inside so when you open the door you can reach them nice and easy. We've really designed this kitchen as we were thinking about how to design it. We could have put the sink over here and the stove, or we could have put the stove and the sink here. But what we wanted to do was just to make it really user friendly. Like if you're out, like this comes with a cutting board with the sink. So you could sit right here and you could wash vegetables and you could be setting them right here and you could even grab it and come over here set it down and somebody can be dicing, cooking, and then you can open the window, hand it out to the people out there. Uh, we just really felt like this was a better use of space because obviously if you're cooking, you wanna be able to prep and set things down right next to the stove. If you're washing, you wanna be able to, you know, wash and set things next to the sink. You could also get a dry rack right here and have your stuff run off. You know, you can wash your dishes, put them here and let it dry off into the sink. This sink is super deep. As you can see, I'm almost my forearm into there. Has a little rack right there at the bottom. And then of course you have a nice sink that comes off and you can spray with it, hot and cold water. And we have another outlet right there to be able to, you know, put a blender or something right here. And then this storage compartment is amazing. This thing is super deep, has a light. This goes all the way back. And then this storage area is massive. This is a king size bed. We have our outside shower that's not hooked up yet in there. Got a bunch of sweaters and just miscellaneous stuff. When we were in Baja, I had this full of stuff. We put, we found these little bins that fit perfectly inside of there and they were just little square bins. And so we put a bunch in there. So whatever you needed, you just reach in and grab one of them out. You could even have stacking things. And then that closes off nicely too. So, okay, now for my favorite part, let's go into the bathroom. I like to talk dirty in the bathroom. <laughs> Here we are in the bathroom. There's my light, got a fan. You need a fan in the bathroom. Very, very important. Here we have a molded fiberglass shower. This thing is super, super nice. Uh, there's a toilet right there. You have your water, separate water tank. This is the theft board. This is brand new. I haven't actually used this toilet yet, so I feel comfortable sitting on it like this. Very nice, spacious shower. We have our little shower head right here. Obviously, you're like, man, that's for like really small people. No, it's not. It's just for kids, right? Your little daughter sitting in here showering hot and cold. You have a little soap bar right there. Well, if you need it to go a little bit taller, you can go all the way to there. Remember the roof comes down, so you wanna make sure the shower is down when you're traveling. But when you get to wherever you're going, yes, you, there's another spot up here that you can adjust and add the shower right there. And then you can be six, I'm six feet tall, 230 pounds, 
I got plenty of headroom in here. This is very, very comfortable. If I drop a bar of soap, everybody wants to know, can you pick up a bar of soap if you drop a bar of soap in the shower? That's important. Bars of soap tend to be slippery. But look at this. Easily, easily, right here. I, my wife loves wet baths because, you know, when you're done showering, you can like shower off the toilet and always keep it nice and clean. She likes things to stay nice and clean. Over here, we have our uh, sink right here and there's a mirror, which is great for prepping, you know, you ladies out there that like to do makeup or brush your teeth, you know, just whatever you need right there. Also, you have your uh, hot and cold right there and a little storage compartment. I found a nice little hook right here that is for a toilet paper holder and you could close this up and have it out of the way when you're showering and you have a good amount of storage in this and it's obviously access to your plumbing which is really important it's it's shocking how often some trailers you don't see this with most of our trailers because we use we carry premium higher end products, but the, a lot of the products in the United States, like it's almost like they make them to throw them in the trash. Like they put plumbing and things in the walls where there's no way to access them. And when things go wrong, which they tend to go wrong from time to time, you're kind of like SOL, right? You're, you're done. Like it's like throw the trailer away. It's just, it just, it's nice to have everything accessible where you can easily repair or fix if you need to, which you will need to because these are off-road trailers and hopefully you're going out and doing some crazy off-roading and things will break, right? That's inevitable, but it's good to have the ability to fix it on the fly or have access to things to fix. Well, there you have it. The all new Dweller D15 Tour. Like I said, we have now put thousands of miles on this trailer. We've taken it off-road, off-grid. Everything is performing pretty pretty dang good on it. Uh, the heat, we've had it in cold, extreme temperatures now, testing the heat system. It stays it stays pretty, pretty warm in cold temperatures. I mean, it actually stays really warm, uh, just quite the reality of it. No trailer is without issues. And, and I, I, I just want people to know that. It's because it's crazy, like, whether you buy a pontoon boat or a $100 million yacht, things are gonna break. Cars break, right? You, you gotta do service, you gotta do maintenance, you gotta do oil changes. Now, I will tell you, the standard RV dealer in America, unfortunately, doesn't check their products before they sell them. And they just kinda like, leave their shops and then people end up having to take them back for warranty. Here at ROA, we do a pretty thorough PDIs. We miss things from time to time, but we a PDI is pre-delivery inspection. We go through them and we really try to fix anything right off the bat. So when you go out and you're off-roading and going through rugged terrains, you, you're not gonna have issues right away, right? And then the other thing is we have an incredible support line. You know, we have our Romer text line where if you're having issues, you can be able to text us and that's unheard of. Most places you have to just call up and set up an appointment and drop your trailer off and hopefully it's not in the middle of your trip and it's ruined. Uh, we really, really believe in supporting our roamers because when you buy a camper from us, you're part of a community. You know, we do camping trips, we do rallies. It's really, we have a really cool community that we really love and we want to make sure everybody's out using their campers and enjoying what they've purchased, right? The point of buying a camper is to go out and enjoy nature. It is a tool. It's not, do, do, people get a little bit obsessed and focused on the actual product itself. Remember, it's a tool to get you to go camp and explore and have adventures. It's not, it's not so much about the trailer. Of course, the nice thing about a trailer, especially with these upgraded mods, you know, it gives you all the amenities, the conveniences, and it gives you the ability to get out more frequently and enjoy yourself. But you gotta remember that the reason why you buy a camper is to go out camp. And here at ROA, we try to facilitate lots of opportunities to go out and camp with other like-minded people, other owners. And this is the dweller. This is the new D15 with a bunch of the upgrades that we've done. And we've done some retro things just to make it overall a better product, a better unit. And if you have any questions, if you want, details on a certain thing. I didn't go into a lot of the components under the bed on our other tour, we do go over that stuff. I did talk about the Truma and the batteries and the AC units. It's all under here. 
where it's all set up. I also have my Starlink plugged in right underneath the bed, which is cool. But if you have any other questions, you want some more details on things, make some comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and have a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe and like and share with somebody and we'll hopefully see you on an adventure in the future.